Uh, Dr. Marabzuda could not be here today because of problems getting a visa uh, to the U.S. Uh, so, um, but he had previously sent me some photographs of his work with maggot therapy in Iran. And I felt very strongly that, that uh, his work needs to be seen. And so uh, he sent me uh, um, 29 cases, I think. And I will present some of those cases in this, uh, in this presentation. So this is on behalf of the and team, maggot therapy in Iran. Now, according to the World Health Organization, as you know, uh, diabetic diabetes is the major cause of amputations around the world. There is no known reliable source of how many amputations result from diabetic foot ulcers in Iran. But he tells me the chair of the Iranian Diabetic Society states that almost half of all Iranian diabetic patients eventually do develop diabetic foot ulcers that are at least severe enough to require hospitalization. Avicenna was a uh, widely known philosopher, physician, scientist, psychiatrist, living in Persia over a thousand years ago. He wrote a number of, of uh, important medical texts. And in one of those, he writes that any wound on which larvae are found will certainly heal. So this takes the observations of maggot-induced wound healing even further than the English uh, and European literature that I was familiar with. What we've done in this report is uh, to present a case series of patients treated at three hospitals in Tehran. These are predominantly non-healing wounds that failed conventional therapy as an alternative to amputation. So as you see these cases, keep in mind that, that amputation was the recommended uh, modality in most, if not all, of these patients. And the intervention was to apply maggots directly to the wounds under cage-type dressings and leave them in place for two to three days. A total of 29 wounds in 28 patients uh, have been treated so far and analyzed in this, uh, in this presentation. 22 of those wounds also have underlying osteomyelitis, bone infection. 16 of the wounds are diabetic foot ulcers, five are post-operative infections, three pressure ulcers, three um, neuropathy resulting in Meningo, resulting from meningomyelocele, one bird and one patient with wounds uh, with underlying Berger's disease, a form of arterial obliteration. The age range was 17 to 80 years old, mean was 52 years old, Twice as many males as females were treated in this group. And about twice as many patients were treated in the outpatient setting or in their own home compared to those who were treated in the hospital. The average duration of maggot therapy treatments was 53 days for the diabetic patients. 12 days of maggot therapy on average for those without underlying diabetes. The most common adverse events reported by the patients were pain 
and bad odor. It's interesting to note that the maggot-treated uh, wounds did not require closure with skin grafts or flaps or any other surgery after the maggot therapy, and no blemishing scars were observed, according to the team. Complete debridement was achieved in all of the patients. So of the 22 patients with osteomyelitis, their average, erythrocy erythrocyte, their average erythrocyte sedimentation rate, that's why we just say ESR, prior to treatment was significantly high, 100. That's what you'd expect with osteomyelitis. They all returned to the normal range below 20 following debridement. And clinical cure was achieved in all of them relative to that underlying osteomyelitis. Let me present a few of the uh, cases. This is the first case treated in 2005 in the hospital. A 17-year-old uh, fellow who suffered a train accident and lost his left leg above the knee. The uh, surgical site did not heal, so it was treated with three cycles of maggot therapy. And from that point on, uh, went on to full healing without any grafts or flaps. A 63-year-old man with diabetes had an, an ulcer after anterior and medial foot amputation. This is very common, as you all know, with diabetes. Wound, amputate, no healing. Wound gets bigger, worse, amputate higher up, no healing, amputate, no healing. The alternative is often a very high amputation in, in an area that is more likely to heal, and that may or may not heal too. Fifteen orthopedic surgeons apparently uh, all recommended a below knee amputation. This is a foot now. He's still got his heel. He can ambulate. They, rec uh, they recommended below knee amputation. The operation was canceled because of some abnormal blood tests, and the maggot therapy team intervened. Twenty-four cycles they spent uh, debriding and maintaining debridement over the course of three months, but it did heal. And it w this was covered with a skin graft. Three month follow up, no, uh, no return of the osteomyelitis or breakdown of the wound. A 67 year old diabetic man with diabetes and osteomyelitis you can see a few of the uh, bones exposed here. They treated him with maggot therapy at home. His son changed the dressings, and the wound was completely cleaned in 45 days. So it looks like several of the wounds, of these wounds that I'm presenting, were covered with skin graft, even though I believe I'm, I mentioned that there were no skin grafts. So. Uh, I apologize. This is a 20-year-old man with osteomyelitis following a motorcycle accident and an unsuccessful skin graft, debrided and healed with maggot therapy, two-year follow-up, still no breakdown. Diabetic gentleman with ischemic foot ulcer, maggot therapy, resulted in amputation, I mean resulted in uh, debridement without amputation. Again, you have necrotic toes, debrided, and sparing uh, amputation. Diabetic foot ulcer, debrided with maggot therapy, followed by honey, and she remains healed with no evidence, a 
of recurrence of osteomyelitis for five years. Five-year follow-up is very good. A 17-year-old woman with a neuropathic foot ulcer treated in the hospital with maggot therapy, debrided and healed. This veteran of the Iran-Iraq war had a non-healing wound for 27 years. Patient refused amputation repeatedly. The wound was treated with maggot therapy for just 17 <clears throat> days, and it healed. Another gentleman with diabetes hospitalized for less than a week with maggot therapy. This is what Berger's disease can do. Arterial blood flow is cut off, no oxygen, no nutrients reaching the skin. The skin dies, the muscle, the bone either, either dies or gets infected and then dies. Of course, he has tobacco use, which substantially uh, adds to his risks. Uh, Baloney amputation was recommended. He was debrided with maggot therapy. Clearly, it has done nothing for the, the dead bone, uh, but the wound proximal to that looks good enough that, um, that, his, that part of his foot can be saved. And we have no follow-up on that just yet. So in conclusions, we would say that Iran has a long and glorious history of medical advances. Going back thousands of years, early physicians in this part of the world recognized the medicinal value of maggots in wounds. And modern day physicians are now harnessing the maggots potential for wound healing to treat some of the most challenging wounds of all, those that have failed every available conventional treatment. Maggot therapy has successfully treated non-healing pressure ulcers, ischemic ulcers, diabetic foot ulcers, and post-traumatic and post-surgical wounds. Maggot therapy as salvage therapy has healed wounds that would otherwise have resulted in amputation. Here in Iran, as I've uh, shared with you, as well as elsewhere in the world. And so maggot therapy has been so successful in Iran that many diabetic patients and their doctors are now demanding this type of treatment. Maggot therapy should not be considered a, a viable option only in technologically advanced areas, given the fact that the use of medicinal maggots requires very little in the way of training electricity, external resources, patients in countries, and patients in areas of, of countries that have great uh, availability of, of resources, but not in those areas. Um, they can substantially benefit from maggot therapy. So thank you very much for allowing me to present Dr. Morabzadeh's study.